I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to Tailgate Tales, a special series of the Southern Spirits podcast. So which school are we going to talk about today, Leah? Mitchell, this week we're talking about the University of Kentucky. All right. Well, let's discuss Kentucky real quick. Okay. Uh, this season so far, they are 1-0. and They won their opening week game. Huzzah. Congratulations, Kentucky. Yay. And tonight, on September 8th, they are playing Florida at Florida at 6.30 p.m. That sounds challenging. That will be in Gainesville. Well, Florida's ranked uh, like 25th right now, I think. Oh, really? I I thought they were supposed to be real good. Or weren't they a few years ago? I don't know anything about football. I'm sorry, y'all. Florida's always pretty good. The last few years, they've kind of struggled. but okay. Not really struggled, but not been like up where they were back in the Tim Tebow days and everything. But they're pretty good this year. So Kentucky is playing them at Florida at 6.30. Well, good luck, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Or break legs. Can you say good luck in sports or is it breaking legs too? It doesn't matter. Okay. No one in sports is superstitious. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's meet the mascot for Kentucky. All right. Kentucky goes by the Wildcats. I knew that one. Did you? I did. Well, their mascot's name is Scratch. It should be Steve. All cats well, should be Steve. <laughs> what if it was? Let's petition. <laughs> Let's petition. Kentucky, change your name to to uh, Steve. All you can cats be should cat, be named Steve. Even the big ones. Your mascot can just be Steve, and it can be a big, plush uh, version of my cat. Yes. Well, it originated, the name did, in 1909. Scratch or Wildcats? Wildcats. Okay. In 1909. And uh, here's that same information from that uh, Saturday Down South article. It's the short version of how Kentucky came to be called the Wildcats. Well, let's hear about it. And this is taken from that article and a little bit from Kentucky's website because they didn't have quite enough information in the Saturday Down South article. There's just more on Kentucky's website. So Kentucky the state, Kentucky the school. The school, the okay. University of Kentucky yeah, website. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So here is how they came to be called the Wildcats. Following a 6-2 win against Illinois in 1909, Commandant Carbusier. How would you pronounce this, Leah? It's C-A-R-B-U-I-S-E-R. Carbusier. I think it's Carbuser. How about we just call him Mr. C? All right. Following a 6-2 win against Illinois in 1909, Commandant C, then head of the military department at Old State University, told a group of students at a chapel service that the football team had, quote, fought like wildcats, end quote. As the media and fans picked up on it, the university adopted the nickname. I mean, that's one way to do it. Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of like how Alabama came to be the Crimson Tide. Somebody just wrote that the Aren't we going to wait on the line that story was like, to do that? Well, everybody knows that, though. Well, I don't. Okay. Well, never mind. Uh, Cut it. Spoiler (laughs) alert. Spoiler. Oh, we're working up to that big old finale, and you're just trying to throw things left and right. Well, that's the mascot, Leah. Uh, So what do we have next? Well, I think we should just go right into our first and only story, since this is a tailgate tale. Let's go into our University of Kentucky uh, story. All right. So. Uh, Oh, I do want to say that I am still drinking Monkey Knot IPA. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to drink those for a while, but I'm going to mention it every time. So Monkey Knot IPA is being imbibed. Because it's delicious. Correct. Now you may continue to the story. All right. Well, um, heads up, University of Kentucky doesn't come in until a little bit later. Um, but this is, it, it, it is, you know, a thing. It's connected. I promise. Just stick with me, okay? If you say so. All right. So 1820 is where we're starting. Okay. We're starting in the remote settlement of Troublesome Creek, and it's in eastern Kentucky, and it is very remote and mountainous and isolated. Hmm. Um, it's, it's hill country out there. The person that we're starting to talk about is a French orphan, and his name is Martin Fugate, um, and he had just arrived there. Fugati. I don't, nope, Fugate. Um <laughs> He had just arrived there. I couldn't find any reason why he arrived there. I don't know. Just they. Right. Every story that I've read starts when he is already in Kentucky. And okay. I, fine. Anyway. But anyway, he 
decides that he's getting married to this lady, and she's a red-haired, beautiful, pale skin, just like a delicate little porcelain doll. Her name was <laughs> Elizabeth Smith, um, and she was described as being... <clears throat> Pale as the mountain laurel that blooms every spring around the creek hollows. Which what? I don't know why that was a thing, but you know, she's real pretty. I don't know what um, that means, though. I don't she, follow that that uh, metaphor at all. I, well, mountain laurel's white. Okay. And, and pretty. So she was super white. She was very pale and very pretty. That's all you need to know. Okay. Well. You say so. It turns out that. Martin was not white and pale like the mountain laurel because he was blue as fuck. What? <laughs> he was blue. <laughs> like this story is about the blue people of like Kentucky. He's, he's a he hue. Is, he's he a is, blue hue. He is a person. He's not just a hue. He's he's straight up bluer than a blueberry. He is blue. Is this a Smurf? That's why I was giggling earlier, because, yes, they look like Smurfs. Oh, because we watched a video on YouTube that mentioned the Smurfs. Yeah. Okay. I see what... Blue. Okay. Very, very blue people. I get it. So, the couple went on to have seven children, um, and four of them were also blue. Um, because it turns out that the mother was also... It's a very, very rare genetic condition, turns out. Um and he was, it's a recessive problem, mm -hmm. and he had both copies of the gene, and she, turns out, the only way that this could express in their children was if she was a carrier. Right, and like they, red hair. Exactly, yeah. and they somehow, like, oopsie-daisy, ended up having kids together, and four of their kids ended up being very blue. I've never heard of blue people. Well. You know? They are very blue. Um, I don't believe it. Well, I mean, this isn't this isn't folklore or conjecture. There are pictures of these people. It is legitimately a medical problem. I want to see them. They're blue. Um, so it turns out that when you live in a very isolated place and there's not a lot of people and it's a small settlement, there aren't any roads in, the railroads nearby don't connect very well. Mm, means a lot of inbreeding going on. Hmm. If you know what I mean. Interesting. So, like, for example... Um, These are uh, <laughs> birth defect Smurf. Yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> so I was trying to think of a good Smurf name, and I came up with birth defect. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's not nice. It didn't go well. Anyway. But so, like, for example, the Fugate son, Zachariah... Ended up marrying his aunt. Like, that's the level of intermarrying we're at here. Huh. A little weird. Well, so, I mean, it's better than brother and sister. Yeah, it is. But um, that just really exacerbates the problem that you have with a recessive genetic disorder. Mm -hmm. So there's just this community up there that has a lot of fucking blue people in it. Like, and I'm not... Like, I mean, right now? Still? Well, we're going to get there. Okay. Sorry. We're getting there. All just right. shh. Yeesh. Um, but, like, they're just freaking really, really blue. Um, and so, like I said, as the fact that they were blue and to outside people, if you come out and see in a blue people, you're going to be like, oh, fucking shit. So they're <laughs> very, I'm sure, very self-conscious about the fact that they're blue and it sort of leads them to being more of a tight-knit, isolated, family kind of oriented community because nobody else understands that they're blue and, you know, and that just makes the problem worse. So there's lots of these blue folk just running around. Well, in the 60s, there was a hematologist from the University of Kentucky Medical Center. University of Kentucky, we made it. Yay. Yay. We're there. Yeah. Uh, his name was Dr. Madison Cowain, I believe is how you pronounce his name. It's C-A-W-E-I-N, Cowain, Cowain. Um, I think it's Cab Cabruzier. <laughs> We're going to call him Dr. C. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's Not the same one from the other story. Commandant. That was Commandant. Uh, well, this is doctor. He's a hematologist. Thank you. 
so Dr. C heard rumors around that there were blue people in Troublesome Creek, and he was very interested. The creek is called Troublesome Creek. Troublesome first of all? Creek is the area. All right. Um, and and he was very interested in going to find these people because he wanted to to do tests and see what was making them so damn blue. Um, and so he recruited a nurse, and her name was Ruth Pendergrass, and she helped him, you know, draw blood samples and all of that stuff. So they get together, and they, she knows particularly. Um, so, like, she was working in a, like, a health department kind of situation, and she was first made aware of this <clears> thing <throat> when there was a woman with dark blue skin that came into the county health department wanting a blood test for something. Um, and she said, and this is a quote, her face and fingernails were almost indigo blue. It scared me to death. She looked like she was having a heart attack. Yeah. So she was freaked out, and, you know, it's so, so weird. she had... She had personal knowledge that there are, in fact, these blue people. It's not just a rumor. Mm -hmm. So they teamed up and they went out to Troublesome Creek. Excuse me. Gross. To start meeting members of the Fugate family. Um, So they ended up finally meeting a couple named Patrick and Rachel Ritchie. And they were both blue. And Dr. Mm -hmm. C described them, and this is a quote, as bluer in hell. (laughs) Well, that just makes no sense. It's not nice, right? That makes no sense. But yeah, he called them bluer in hell. Um, and the, he also said that they were very embarrassed about being blue. Uh, that when they brought them into the medical facility, that Patrick was hunched down and sort of just trying to make himself small because mm-hmm. he was not wanting people to look at him. Rachel was leaning against the wall. They didn't want to go into the waiting room. They were just like really upset and kind of freaked out and like just... They don't get out much, and people look at you when you're blue. Turns I was going to say, out. that could be more of a symptom of being, you know, hill people and not really communicating with anyone outside of well, your I community either. Well, I mean, I either. think the, the, th- the two things sort of, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, it's, it sort it of all feeds together. together. It's, mm-hmm. it's a, you know. I'd accept some blue people in my society. I mean, if someone's blue and they want to be blue, baby, you go. You Dabba do dee, you. Dabba die. I wish I could... I want to be purple. Let's let's do this. I'm game. That's not, that's not an option. Oh, damn. If you're purple, I think you're choking. Oh, yeah, probably. But anyway, so, please um, so Dr. C did a bunch of medical tests. He wanted to make sure that it wasn't any kind of heart disease. Um, he had the nurse come up with a family tree, and they traced it back to that first Martin Fugate. Um, and he suspected that it was a medical condition called, and I'm going to try this, y'all, but I don't know. Excuse me. Methemoglobinemia. Methemoglobinemia. Me- exactly. Methemoglobinemia. Yeah. Um, Methemoglobinemia. Methemoglobinemia. Very nice. Huzzah. It doesn't help that we're both marble mouths <laughs> as well. Which, by the way, by the way, if you're if you are a person that stumbles over words, it's really hard to say marble mouth. Marble mouth? Marble mouth, marble mouth, marble mouth, marble mouth. I can do it a few times fast, though. All right, fine. Can um, we get back to the methemoglobinemia? I said it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, but, you know, he couldn't be completely positive what was causing it until they did some other tests. So, um they looked at abnormal hemoglobin, excessive vitamin K consumption, but they did all of the blood tests and it eventually um, they figured out that the fugates lacked the enzyme in their blood diaphorase. And so he came up with a cure for him. And it turns out that cure was a shot of the dye, which is also used as a medication, called methylene blue, which I think it's kind of funny that a blue dye is going to turn him back pink. Mm -hmm. But it was. Um, So he went ahead and had the nurse administer shots of methylene blue. And all of a sudden, just within minutes, their skin turned pink. And here's the nurse's quote. It says, they changed colors. It was really something exciting to see. <laughs> you pulled that for a quote? I did. <laughs> they changed colors. It was real exciting to see. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, all right. So all that they did was seriously inject them with dye? They injected them it. with a dye that... I, now, I did look all of this up on another... Um, uh, if anybody knows about I fucking love science, like they've got an article about that that goes deep into depth about like the different enzymes and chemicals and stuff involved with what was wrong and what fixed them. Um, but I'm not going to go into that because I don't. I seriously doubt that anybody else cares. Um, but if you are and interested, if you, do, you can find the article. Yeah, if you're interested, yeah. go look up the I fucking love science um, article about them. It's really good. Um, but anyway. But the only problem with that is that the dye is basically it'll go out of your system within a few hours. You pee it out, basically. And you pee blue. But anyway. Well, I was um, going to ask, do they have to get regular shots? Well, it turns out that uh, methylene blue also comes in a pill form. So he just uh, provided them with a shit ton of blue, like methylene and you blue can pills. absorb that through your stomach? Mm-hmm. And it can dye and your skin? And it changes. It doesn't dye the skin. See, there's a thing uh-huh. with... So the iron in their blood is, if you look at it, um, like the chemicals compound, like the notations, regular blood iron is Fe2, and theirs was Fe3, and whatever in the methylene blue causes it to lose an electron or whatever and make it into Fe2. So it makes their skin blue, or skin from blue to red. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it bonds with that other electron somehow. This is very not good science. I'm sorry, y'all. Once again, <laughs> No, I, I think it's great science. I just think that you are not describing it very well. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't... That's not my background. I love it. It's really interesting to me, but that... I didn't research to tell you the science behind it. I just think it's really cool that there were blue people. I would have no chance to understand mm-hmm. this crap. Yeah, None. so... Because um, I think I've heard of people peeing blue before. Like, do people have to take this for other procedures, like uh, CAT scans or anything like that? You know, what is it that you have to either be injected with or ingest dye to have something done? Is it an MRI? Oh, there's a lot of different things. It's just any kind of imaging process where you have to have contrast. Mm -hmm. And I think that people pee different colors sometimes if they have to ingest something. I've had contrast, and I've never peed a different color. Like, it can make your um, pee sort of really dark and coppery, but I've never heard of peeing another color. Samus is barking again. Sorry. I don't know if it picked up or not. We're going to have to... We're we're putting this in every fucking thing we record now. (laughs) Yeah. Just dogs. Uh, Sorry, y'all. So, he sent them home with just a big old bottle of that methylene blue tablets, and, you know... They distributed that same cure to the rest of the family, and, you know, everybody stopped being blue, which is kind of cool. Um, and then as sort of things progressed in that area, roads were built, railroads were constructed, people started, you know, coming into the town, people started leaving the town, um, things got a lot less isolated, so the problem of, you know, intermarrying just wasn't an issue anymore and you have to you have to have those two recessive genes to have any chance of your offspring having a blue you know being Mm -hmm. a blue person um so it really sort of just dissipated and wasn't a problem anymore except i think the last known person that i could find in that family that had any issues like that was a guy in the 70s um who was born in the 70s he's still alive i believe um, but his name was Benjamin Stacy, and he was the great, 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 great grandson of Martin Fugate and Elizabeth Smith. Um, and what was the weird thing, though, was his parents had no idea about the blue people. It was just one wow. of those, like, things people didn't talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he was born, and he was f- blue as a baby. He was just a blue baby, and they were like... Well, shit. And they, the grandmother was like, all right, I know what's going on. My, you know, someone says, anyway, it turns out the great grandmother had been blue. And so they figured it out. And it turns out that there are different levels of being a carrier of this gene. And um, basically, he grew out of the disorder without even having to take any of the methylene blue. Mm -hmm. Um, But he was born blue. Um, But that was the last person that i could find that was even affected by this so while it is um still a thing it's very possible to still get it um but i mean it's just not something that's very 
likely to happen because mm-hmm. it is a recessive issue. And unless there's a lot of intermarrying with that gene, it's just not going to happen. So, so the please university, don't worry about your blue children. So the University of Kentucky f- fixed blue people? They f- they helped unbluify the blue people <laughs> of Kentucky. Well, you have to wonder if that's why the university's colors are what they are. They're blue and white. I think they had already been blue and white at that point. Most likely, but you know. When did this start? The Fugates? The Fugates have been around since 1820. Okay. That's when the Martin Fugate and um, his wife arrived in Troublesome Creek. But they didn't, the Dr. C, the hematologist, didn't show up until the 60s. 1960s, not right. 18. So okay. it was a hot minute. They were very blue for a very long time. Yeah. I think Kentucky just has a like a blue lineage, though. Like, I think they're... I don't know, but I think probably their state flag is blue. I, don't, I have no idea. What is I think Kentucky's I'm just talking flag? out of my ass. I don't know, but you could type it in and find out. Ah, Kentucky's <sighs> flag is blue. Owned. Okay, so yeah, there's just blue in the thing. <laughs> they didn't blueify the university because of the blue people no probably not but you know well but anyway i thought I you might enjoy the story about the blue people and how the university of kentucky made these people not blue anymore so this has never happened anywhere else I mean, like in recorded well, history in no, the no, world no 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 it has it's okay. a thing but because um so like it's the gene mutation is from the french huguenot line yeah um and those people ended up settling in oddly enough i believe this was from a different article and i don't think i copied it down because it was just sort of ephemera but um they mm. settled in ireland italy and um kentucky <laughs> <laughs> Those are quite some choices. Weird, right? Everybody. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> also, I want you to Google. Go get onto Google, image search uh, the few gates of Kentucky, and a couple of, like, not the one that's a painting, but the one that's actually a guy on a talk show. Like, there's pictures of a guy with this disorder. Um, Holy shit, they are blue people. And, he, and they're yeah, very... Yeah, I've seen that. Like, he's smurf freaking blue. Wow. Okay. So I've seen this picture of the family before. Yeah. That's a painting. Yeah. That's a painting. And but like the guy a couple over, he's, yeah, he's I actually that. blue. Mm-hmm. I see the lady that's blue. Like mm-hmm. their hair's even kind of blue. Maybe it's just I like I think it's the just they've root. got white hair and it yeah. reflects. But yeah. Okay, they're not like a blue tint. They're no, full of blue No, no, no. It's not, it's not like a tinge or tint. Because <laughs> when I heard blue people of Kentucky, I was thinking, oh, like it looks like they're maybe choking a little bit, but aren't. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, no. They are blue people. That man is very blue. And he wears blue, too. Stop <laughs> wearing blue. <laughs> hey, if you're going to embrace it, just you go whole hog. Nut. Stop doing it. But anyway, yeah, so that's that's the Fugate family mm-hmm. uh, of Kentucky, and I th- really hope you thought that was as interesting as I was. I did. I mean, it's interesting. I do. It's anyway. fucking weird. Yeah. I can't believe these people are actually blue, though. Yeah. And like I said, I thought that it would be like a blue tint. Uh-uh. No, they are like full-on opaque blue. Yeah. It looks like someone used a really good face paint and just Mm -hmm. like body painted them up and like like the 40th picture down is just a picture of uh kelsey grammar as beast in (laughs) x-men because that's a thing yeah oh bless Uh, i guess that he was a fugati Hmm. (laughs) all right well is that it yeah that was it okay i enjoyed this week it was a lot better than the uh radiation well i thought i would give you week. something that nobody got murdered in just yeah. just once that was or nice of poison. You. Thank, you. thank you well y'all uh fi- find us on social media please all, do all of the different locations at southern spirits podcast not at southern spirits podcast because sometimes the names are different but you can search southern spirits podcast and find us yep give us some reviews um some ratings send us those things if you want some stickers our patreon will be um unveiled soon so be looking out for that unveiled unveiled 
and send us any uh, SEC stories you may have. Please do. We'll I talk would about really them. love to get some stories from y'all. Um, I'm interested to know mm-hmm. what y'all think about SEC schools, ghosts, and whatnot. Tell us your favorite team. It doesn't have to be an SEC school. You I was going to say, if us. you've got a ghost story from college and you just want to tell me, I'm I'm going to read it. It's fine. Let's do this. Yeah, feel free. And we hope that your team wins this weekend if anybody uh, follows football at all. Or doesn't. Yeah, Whatever. we still hope your team wins if you don't follow football. So yeah, just because we're nice people. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's just about it. Well, we will see y'all in week three. Alrighty, bye y'all.